I'm David Marshall, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're happy to be joined by Andy Serwitz, the technical evangelist at Hornet Security. Andy, it's good to finally meet you in person and speak with you. Definitely, definitely. I really appreciate you having us on the show, David. Uh, looking forward to talking about backup and recovery today, right? Well, you're the man to do that. We're uh, we're excited to have you. Uh, so I, to that point, why don't we just kick things off, if you wouldn't mind, sure. give a quick uh, overview of uh, Hornet Security to the VM blog viewers. Yeah, definitely. So here at Hornet Security, we really see ourselves as, you know, the all-encompassing security solution for 365 as well as virtual machines. So, you know, Hornet Security really got its start in kind of the email security space and over the years has started getting into um, kind of filling out that suite. So on the 365 side, that includes all the email security stuff that, you know, you'd imagine would be in our suite as long as well as... Um, backup and recovery as well. So uh, when we think about backup and recovery for 365, that includes backup and recovery for OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, Exchange Online. But more specifically on the VM backup side of things, that includes backups for virtual machines running on Hyper-V and VMware. So on top of all that, we're also starting to get into the kind of compliance and governance space in 365, where you've got a security awareness service now as well so um you know they're definitely keeping me on my toes and uh you know we're just putting out all kinds of great fantastic products and um lots of stuff to talk about in interviews such as this one yeah and and, and to that point uh i i know uh, hornet security just came out with the uh, vm backup version 9 uh what can you tell us about that release definitely so um vm backup version 9 is you know kind of it's the most recent major update for our longstanding VM backup application, right? And there's really two big things that I like to talk about as part of this release. And the first one is the fact that um, we now have ransomware protection built into the product via immutable offsite storage. So we all know ransomware is a huge problem in the industry, right? I mean, you can't go a week without hearing about some sort of new ransomware attack, right? So we know that this is a problem for organizations, right? So we wanted to make sure we could provide some additional protection for backups because that's often the last bastion of hope for most organizations when they're dealing with a ras ransomware attack. So we want to make sure we can keep those safe. So uh, the other big uh, addition to this release is we've made a lot of scalability enhancements. So we got a lot of feedback over the last year or two about like, hey, you know, love your guys' product, but you know, I'd love to scale it up to be able to handle more hosts, more virtual machines. And so we made a lot of under the hood changes to allow for larger deployment. So that's the other big not noticeable change inside of version nine. Now, uh, in addition to the word ransomware, the other word that for the last couple of years has been uh, everywhere and means lots of different things to different folks is cloud. Uh, as the world True. shifts over to cloud, do you, in your opinion, is there still a growing need for backup solutions for the on-premises data center? You know, it's a good question. And it's a valid question, right? Because I mean, I think this trend has been going on for 10 plus years now, right? Where like, hey, we're going to the cloud, everything is cloud, right? Well, the fact is, is that there are always going to be workloads that for whether technical reasons or regulatory reasons, or maybe an organization just doesn't feel comfortable shifting workloads outside of their own data center, there's always going to be a need for on-premises infrastructure, including virtual machines, right? And it's not just for those on-premises data centers, maybe at uh, a company's location. You know, we see cases where companies will leverage colo locations inside of other data centers, or they'll work with a a uh, managed service provider, for example, who has their own data center and they'll host some workloads with them. You know, anywhere where you've got Hyper-V or VM, uh, VMware based virtual machines running, we can plug in and help protect those workloads. Yeah, I think that's great. And it's a great point. And uh, I, we, we see the shifting to the cloud, but we're also at the same time seeing a shift uh, of people from the cloud back to on premises. So you Very know, true. It, it's a hybrid world, and I'm glad that uh, you know you guys are still, uh, you know, taking uh, effect on both uh, both sides of the fence. 
Definitely. We're trying to. And I think to your point about some workload shifting back, I think some organizations, you know, that, you know, OPEX monthly pay as you go model was so enticing. They just lifted and shifted everything. And then they kind of got sticker shock after they started seeing some of the monthly bills. Right. And I think having both cloud and on premises be a valid option, it gives organizations, you know, different tools to achieve different goals, right? So I think it's important that we are able to protect workloads in both locations, you know, both in Microsoft 365, as well as for virtual machines running on premises. Now, you mentioned one of the big enhancements with version nine is ransomware protection uh, via immutable cloud storage. Talk a little bit about that. How do you define immutable storage? Yeah, so, you know, I still run into the occasional person that doesn't know what this immutability word is, right? And the way I always explain it is, okay, you know, I'm going to pretend I'm a hard disk for a second here, right? And I have a block of data coming in, and I'm going to write that block of data. Now, normally, I'd write that block of data. And if, you know, somebody needs to change it after the fact, for some reason, we can change it. Well, when you have immutable storage, I'm going to write that block of data, but I'm not going to let anyone change it. Not even God can change this block of data after it's been written, right? Because you think about how ransomware operates, you know, uh, ransomware operators are going to go into an environment and they're going to try to sniff out the backups, right? And then they encrypt the backups. And obviously that requires some write operations. Well, if we don't let writes happen to that block of data, it can't be changed, right? And that's really what immutability is, you know, when you really get down to it. Yeah, I think that's a good point uh, where, you, where you're talking about immutable storage is storage that can't be tampered with after the write. Uh, but Correct. I, but I think a lot of folks, you know, are still kind of wondering as they're thinking about it, you know, hey, wait, I'm an administrator. Shouldn't I be allowed to do that? Uh, how do you explain it to, to those folks who uh, don't think they're God, but uh, within, a, within a data center, you know, ha have that uh, that higher power? Correct. Yeah. So in that situation, I mean, you know, it's all down at the file system level built into the, the cloud platform, right? So today we support AWS, Wasabi Cloud Immutable, Immutable Storage. In a future update, we will have support for Azure-based Immutable Storage as well, too. So you think about those platforms, you think about the data centers, the controls to get into those data centers. Uh, you know, you have the accountability within those data center teams to where, you just think about the bureaucracy, you know, if if I was an AWS administrator, if I want to go change a, a piece of data somewhere, one, I got to figure out, you know, where in these thousands and thousands of racks that piece of data exists, then I have to get access to uh, authorize access to go and tinker with it. I mean, you think about all of the controls and bureaucracy around that process. And by and large, it is going to be way more difficult to tamper with storage in that manner inside of a cloud provider than it would be inside of your own organization. Now, at the you know cloud management layer for those platforms, the controls are put into place with our immutable storage to where once it's written, you know you can't. Not even the administrator can tamper with that data until the elapsed time has occurred. So I'm going to show you in a, a demo here shortly, you'll see where you can actually define a length of time that you want the backups to remain immutable. So really, it, like I said, it prevents all parties, administrators included, from tampering with that data once it's been written. Yeah, and I think that's that's the important point for folks watching to, uh, to I guess, fully grasp. Uh, you, we talked a, a couple of times, you know, the word ransomware, but this this whole concept of immutability is really, you know, uh, something else to protect the organization and its data from ransomware uh, outside of, you know, when 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 you're thinking of just straight security or security software, uh, this is just another uh, avenue of, of protection. Right. Correct. Correct. And what we found by and large, as we get into, I guess, what I'll call the modern uh, cybersecurity society here, um, you know, is the fact that it's not like the old days where we just had to worry about the four walls of our building. We'd slap a firewall on the entry point, antivirus on the endpoints and call it good. It's about layers of security these days, right? Because, you know, we just have to assume breach in some cases 
And having those multiple layers of security helps keep us all more protected. You mentioned uh, being able to see something. Uh, any chance just give us a quick demo uh, so we can see kind of what Hornet security looks like? Yeah, definitely. I can show you the dashboard here really quick, and I'll also show you how easy it is to set up an immutable cloud backup location and then assign VMs to it. Yeah, we can go through that. All right, great. All right. So here I am in the lab environment. Uh, you know, we've logged into the VM backup application, and this is the dashboard. And the dashboard is really kind of your one-stop shop, you know, your high-level overview of the health of your backup environment. So we can see things like backup drive status, you know, how much free space do I have? What does our deduplication and compression ratios look like? Recent operations. If there were any active jobs happening, you would see them happening down here in the active and upcoming operations section. So again, kind of a nice place to just get a general overview of what's going on in your back environment. But more specifically to our conversation today, immutability, you come into backup locations to go ahead and set up everything that I've just talked about. So You'll see here that I've got, you know, that typical tree view you're used to seeing in a lot of applications. On our left-hand side here, I've got my uh, demo environment. So you can see I've got uh, Microsoft Hyper-V. I've got some VMware hosts in here as well. You can see the hosts and all of the associated, associated virtual machines on those hosts as well. On the right-hand side, in the center column, I've got my local on-premises um, backup locations. And on the far right-hand side, you can see I've got several, uh, well, two off-site locations configured. Now, you probably notice this little green label uh, associated with this Amazon S3 offsite location. And you can see that this location has been configured with immutability for 30 days. So every time a backup is written to that location, it will remain immutable for 30 days worth of retention. On the 31st day, it's no longer immutable. And, you know, some people ask, why would you assign, you know, uh, a time value to it? Well, it's for storage savings purposes, right? You think about how we've stored backups all these years, right? In order to save space, we have, you know, allowed one backup to build off the last and off the last and off the last. And if these backups need to remain immutable, well, they need to contain the whole backup in order to stay immutable, right? So allowing you to define a period of time that those backups stay immutable allows you to keep that cloud storage cost as low or as large as you're able to accommodate, right? So in order to set up one of these offsite locations, you just go up to add offsite location. It'll bring up a nice little wizard here with all of our different offsite options. Uh, for the purposes of this conversation, like I said, the three most important here are the Azure, Amazon S3, and Wasabi. Now, again, like I mentioned today, we support uh, immutable storage for Amazon S3, as well as Wasabi cloud storage accounts. Uh, Azure st uh, mutable storage is coming soon in a future update. So let's say I want to set up, you know, a, a mutable offsite Amazon S3 storage bucket. I'm going to select that. I'm going to hit next. And then it brings me into this screen here. Now we provide all the information you need to get this set up right here. So, you know, you basically, you have to select your region. You provide it, the access key and the secret access key to your storage buckets. Uh, you name the buckets. And down here, you actually will check the checkbox for immutable offs or immutable backups for Amazon S3. Now, if you, like I said, need any help in getting any of this set up, I think what's important to, to point out here is we have links here that will actually link you to the documentation that you need to set this stuff up if you don't know how. Same thing for down here under the immutable section. You know, you have to go in and make some configuration changes to your S3 buckets and enable, you know, object locking. And we've got links here to kind of teach you how to do that in case you don't know. Now, outside of all that, the only other thing you need to configure to turn this thing on is just, like I said, define a number of days that you would like the backups to remain immutable for. So, you know, I've seen organizations do 30 days. I've seen some do 60. I think I even saw one do a full year. But again, it's up to you how long you want to hold on to those immutable backups for. Again, you know, this is primarily for those cases where your organization has been infected by ransomware. And the important thing is you have at least some backups that will remain unencrypted that you can go retrieve in the case, you know, unfortunate case that you are hit with a ransomware attack. So once you have all that set up, it will appear as a uh, an object in this uh, right hand tree. 
And, you know, if I want to assign VMs to that offsite location, it's literally as easy as just clicking and dragging to that location. Um, oh, well, that particular VM is not assigned to a local on-premises location yet. But, you know, it, it's just simply as easy as clicking and dragging. If I wanted to click and drag the entire environment, I could do that as well. And it would automatically assign all those virtual machines to that location. So really... It's that easy. And if you're interested in learning more about this particular product, you can always go out to hornetsecurity.com. We've got a free trial available that you can check out and you can kick the tires on this and you know see if it works for your organization. Well, Andy, thanks a lot. I really appreciate that great demo and this discussion around, uh, I think, a topic everybody is 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 really interested in right now. Yep. Uh, and, and you said that viewers can can kind of kick the tires and get their hands on it. Where Where is it that they should go again? You just go out to hornetsecurity.com and you'll see a drop down for, uh, I think they changed it recently. It's either services or solutions. It's one of the drop downs in the, up at the top right corner of the webpage. And uh, you can go to VM backup and you'll find all the information you could ever want about the product right there. You can also email sales at hornetsecurity.com as well if you're interested. Or, you know, if you have a question for me specifically, uh, you can go out to uh, github.com slash acerwich. Apologies, you'll have to spell my last name. Um, but that has all the different ways that you can get a hold of me out on the web as well. Great. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you uh, for taking time to join VM Blog today and uh, look forward to the next time that we get a chance to speak. Definitely. It'd be fun. Appreciate you having us. All right.